So 2003 Ford Focus 1600 ZTEC petrol. Heater fan not working. So I've gone through and fault finded uh, all the electrical system to find that the motor had seized. So I had to take the fan motor out um, and unseized it. I've oiled it and it seems to be spinning quite well now. So I've tested that on a separate 12 volt battery and that's spinning great. So I put it back in, put it all back together and this is what we've got. Ignition on. Fan one, nothing. Fan position two, nothing. Fan position three, nothing. Fan position four, full fan. Now, this is a classic fault with these Ford Focuses when the heater fan stops working. Uh, and obviously the air conditioning won't work either. It's because of the resistor pack which goes with the heater. And here's the resistor pack. Let's focus on that. Hopefully we can focus on that. Uh, you normally see this side of it. They're quite often blue. This one's this particular one's black. There are four terminals on that, as you can see. Now, what this does is it gives, first of all, it gives a bypass feed to switch four on the heater control. So what happens is there is no resistance and you've got full power. So that's full 12 volt power to the fan. And normally when the fan's working on position four and none of the other settings, you know it has to be this resistor pack because the other three settings all go through these resistors. And there's an array of resistors in there. That's the, that's the fuse at the top there. There's an array of resistors which gives a sequential re, re, um, no, increase, a sequential increase in resistance and slows the fan down. So when one, two and three are not working, you know it has to be this. So now I'll have to replace this resistor pack. I suspect what's happened is that the motor is jammed, seized up, and the load on the resistor pack has blown the resistor pack. I suspect that's what's happened. But at least now it's working on f on setting four, uh, and I've put a new fresh f fuse in, and that's fine. It's not blown. So great, we're making progress. So now all I'm going to do is replace that resistor pack, and I suspect that all of the fan settings will work. And of course, when it's on three, we will now get air conditioning. Excellent. So next step uh, is a resistor pack. There we can see the resistor pack in blue. There's a single um, screw at the bottom holding it in. So we just need to access that with a long screwdriver and pull that out. So a quick check on what we've done so far. We've checked all the fuses and found fuse 64 in the engine compartment fuse box had blown and repeatedly blew, blew when we put another fuse in. So obviously there was something wrong with the motor being jammed or something. So I took the motor out and sure enough it was jammed. So I freed that up and it seems to be working fine now. I put it on an external battery and it was running. So I put it all back and when I tried it again, tested it, it would only work on setting four um, on the control. And all of the others it wouldn't work. So that told me that the resistor pack had definitely gone as well. So I think what's happened is the jammed motor has put too much of a load on the resistor pack and the resistor pack has gone. It could just be the fuse on the top, but I'd already got a brand new one in line, so I put that in. And this is the test now, the final test with the new resistor pack. So ignition on, setting one. Fan's working fine. Position two. Yep, that's fine. Three. Yes, that's working great. And now that will mean that we should have air conditioning. And yes, the air conditioning light's on. That's fine. Position four again. Full fan. Fantastic. About to go on holiday tomorrow. And going on holiday in this heat without any air conditioning or fan. It's going to be murder. So brilliant. That was it. It was the motor seized, the fan motor seized, and the resistor pack.
So our fault is the motor, the fan heater motor, which isn't working. There may be other issues, but for now that is the symptom that we um, can recognise and see straight away. So let's start at the motor. So we need to see what is driving this motor, what is powering the motor. And if we work back from this is diagram, uh, diagram 14 in the H manual. So if we work back from the motor, see we've got a fuse here, fuse 64. And that fuse is located in the ignition relay fuse box under the bonnet, under the hood. So that is the engine fuse box. And it comes from a diagram here, CA. So we need to find out where CA is because CA, whatever that is, feeds fuse 64. So that would be one of the first things we're going to check. Obviously, fuse 64 is OK. So it's working back to the power from the battery. We need to find CA. So if we look on diagram 9, right here we can see CA, the link CA. And CA, if you look carefully at this, is fed from fuse 1. Fuse 1 is also in the engine fuse box. So CA is the link to the other page. Now fuse 1 is fed from this relay. And the relay, it's relay 3, is again in the engine fuse box. Relay 50. And if we trace that to fuse 1 and back further, we see that it's powered through the switch in the relay. So the relay switches that on and off. And the power comes to terminal 3 which comes from this point here, which goes back to the battery. So now we've got back to the battery. So there's a plus on the battery, 12 volts, comes up here. It feeds fuse 8, which feeds the ignition switch. And all the ancillaries come from the ignition switch, are switched on by the ignition switch. But there's another tap off of here, which doesn't go through the ignition switch, and goes through this relay. And once that relay is closed, then the power comes through to fuse 1 and then through to CA connection, which then goes to here and feeds fuse 64. So what we need to do now then is look further to the motor. That's the 12 volt feed into the motor. And coming out of the motor, there's two, two cables. This is quite important. One of the cables goes to a fuse internally inside the resistor pack. And this is a resistor pack for the focus, Ford Focus. And what this does is it provides a resistance to the 12 volts and slows the speed down of the fan. So you have four settings on the fan. There's one, two, three, and four. Now, setting four bypasses the fuse pack and it goes straight down and feeds straight into earth, which means that in position four, it's not fed through the resistor pack. And this is why if you've got a fan that works on position four, but no other setting, you almost certainly know that it's the resistor pack that's a fault, because the resistor pack doesn't operate on uh, setting four. Of the other settings, setting three is for the air conditioning only. And setting 3 also has another tapping which goes off and feeds CB and you'll find that that actually then goes to here, CB, which is the air conditioning unit. It operates the air conditioning clutch and so on and the relay for wide open throttle and so on. But we're not interested in that at all so we can forget that. What we're interested in is power to the motor, earth through the resistor pack to earth. So we need to check the ground point at E7 and we need to check that the resistor pack is working OK. And also then we need to possibly remove the motor and check that that's not jammed. Now, I have already checked this through and unfortunately fuse 64 um, was 30 amp fuse was blown. So I replaced it and that blew as well. And I even put a third fuse in to just be doubly sure and that blew. So we know that somewhere in this circuit from this fuse point onwards to earth there is a short or the motor is jammed. Now if the motor is jammed and seized with something in it or just seized in friction 
then obviously that will provide a big load to the to the fuse and the fuse blows. So I suspect that it's probably the motor jammed. But first of all, it'd be much simpler just to check that we've got a good earth, because without an earth it won't work. And once we've checked that, we'll substitute the new fuse pack and see if that works. And if that doesn't work, I suspect it probably won't. I think we're going to have to remove the motor and check that. But what we could do with the motor is we know that we've got a live feed to the motor. Check that. We could provide a bypass from the battery to ground from this side of the motor. So in other words, we just attach the cable to that side of the motor, take that to the chassis anywhere on the frame of the, the car, and that should dry the motor immediately, which will prove that the motor is working. If that ground doesn't make the motor work, then we know the motor's faulty. So we've got a choice here. We can either test, test the motor or we can test the earth down here in the circuit, which goes from the resistor pack. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to check that we've got 12 volts at the motor and we've got an earth on the other side. 